All right, now, we're going to talk about how we look at things, okay? Now, on this show, the main question is going to be why. Because why is the most important question when you're trying to understand what's going on around you, all right? That is how you get to what the real motivation is, the proper context, and also the question that exposes the game. Who, what, where, when, how, all important. But they're finite and much easier to answer. Why is complicated, but that's where we need to focus, especially tonight. Two stories are breaking that demand attention and hinge on why and the manipulation of that answer. The first one, oil production, okay? It's being cut, all right, on the verge of an election. So what are you hearing? Democrats freaking out. Oh, no, it's going to change the midterms. The GOP saying, shame on Biden. More domestic drilling and we'd be fine. Right? That handshake diplomacy. What a mistake with Saudi Arabia. The economy is going to go in the tank. What matters is why production is being cut. Now, one step sideways. It's the most important question, not the only question. And the first thing is, how much is it being cut? Two million barrels a day. Now, look, if you're like me, I don't know what that number means in context. Uh, and it doesn't really matter. What does matter is the Saudi officials then came out and said, um, ac according to several different publications uh, abroad, not the domestic ones here, it's more like one million barrels. That big a difference between the two? What does that tell you? People are playing this story up. But now, back to why. U.S. crude oil production has been increasing almost every year. You know, we make more oil here. We, you know, we drill more oil than Saudi Arabia, just so you know. And every year it goes up, and we're at near record levels right now. 2021 was the second year, along with 2020, since at least about 1949, that annual total petroleum exports were greater than total petroleum imports. You want to get in the weeds just for one second? Petroleum is where we're talking about gas. Okay, that's refined oil. Crude oil is something else you'll talk about that we also get a lot of. It can get complicated, but gas prices, you're going to be worried about refined. That's petroleum. We have had great years with that. So some context in terms of, you know, what ability we have here. So that leads us to this step. The United States is set to produce about 11.8 million barrels of oil per day this year, 2022. That's about 500,000 barrels short of a record that was set in 2019, okay? But here's the trick. If you did more drilling here, we wouldn't have this problem. That's what you hear, right? Why? Well, because then we could make up the shortfall. Not true. Why? Oil prices are not set in the United States. They are paid in dollars. Most people use U.S. dollars to pay for them. That's good. But the prices are set on the world market. So even if the United States backfilled and created its own surplus, it would not change the realities here. You have to deal with OPEC, okay? Now, that's not going to happen. Gets us to why. Why is OPEC doing this now? They haven't done this since May of 2020, when they correctly thought that the demand would be going down due to the pandemic, and they were right. So is it to help Trump? Is it part of a deal to lend money to his family? They're just questions. I don't know the answer. But that's where you should be going. Figure out why. It doesn't have to be about them or that. Likely isn't, to be honest. Why? Because whom did they agree with to do this cut? Russia. Now, is this a situation, if you want to examine the why, that you should finally treat the Saudis as not friends, but maybe frenemies or worse? Certainly should be part of the analysis, unless you just want to point fingers back and forth from the left and the right. So Russia's doing it too. Haven't heard much of that. Why not? Because Russia has become like a weird article of convenience in our politics, where the right doesn't really like to go after Russia or Putin. Why? Because of some silliness during the Trump administration? Russia's doing it too. Back to why are they doing it? To hurt us. To hurt Europe to raise money for a wrongful war, to offset sanctions and fuel their own aggression. So what is to be done? Biden must address this as soon as possible. He must address domestic supply, the Saudi threat, and obvious Russian aggression. 
that's the first story where you got to be asking why get away from the noise of the game. Biden bad, Biden bad. No, no, it's not that. Our oil's fine, we need green energy. Just deal with the why. Look at OPEC, treat them for what they are. You're not gonna backfill here and do it with your own drilling. It's not enough, it's not how the market works. Deal with Russia trying to do bad things to hurt us. Deal with it, how? It's up to our leaders, for them to debate, for you to judge, and for me to discuss. Next story. Biden's move on marijuana. Okay, the headline, pardoning existing simple marijuana possession cases. This is a no-brainer. You talk to anybody in law enforcement, they will say, we do not need our, our jails filled with simple marijuana possession cases, okay? There are lots of bad guys in the drug game that you could give those spots to, not people with simple possession cases. That's why you've seen it changing across the state. One of the reasons that states have been changing it. So, we know that the policy has not made a lot of sense for a while, unless you play politics with it. And that's the why behind this disconnect. So you're gonna pardon these cases. What about future prosecutions? This is a taboo from the 60s, okay? And it's soft on crime. You are pro-drugs, which makes you seem weak and pro-crime. THC is not what it used to be in your granddad's weed, right? This is different, okay? There is different science. It can make someone more likely to abuse the drug, but the data is still very soft in terms of uh, when you see this drug affecting people the way it does others. But that's not the issue here. It's certainly not as dangerous as booze or cigarettes, and vapes are still a question mark as far as I'm concerned. The government has clearly made a turn toward medical use, okay? So how can we have a situation where a state can sell it, and that's legal, but to use it is a federal crime. You see what I'm saying? Why takes you right to the heart of the game. And it's a disconnect based on stupid politics. And I'm not saying go out and get marijuana, everybody should have it, but I don't say that about booze or cigarettes either. These are personal choices. I'm just saying the law should make sense and that is about why you're doing things. And if you examine things through that lens, there's a lot of stuff that gets very obvious very fast. Now, good news. News Nation is the exclusive network home of the Georgia Senate debate, which has gotten a lot hotter over the last week, right? It's been all over the news that Herschel Walker, who's running on the Republican side against Raphael Warnock, he now has some new issues. And he's got a big debate Next Friday, October 14th, 6 p.m. Eastern, debate night in America, hosted by the OAO, one and only Leland Vittert. He's gonna be live from Savannah, and after, I'll have some analysis and reaction. And again, you can only watch it here on News Nation.